Welcome back. Picking up where we left off in our previous tutorial. Now we're going to learn how to create a user form. Let's start by reviewing what we've got here. You'll remember that in our previous tutorial, we created three parameters and two rules. The first rule executes at the assembly level, and it executes the second rule at the component level. The second rule, the one at the component level, has a message box function. Let's click OK and return. Let's open the parameters window now. Right click on the height parameter. Select make multi value. Now let's enter values 10, 20, return and 30, 40. Click add and OK. And let's click done. Before we create the form, go to the Inventor button and scroll down to Save As, Save Copy As. Here you can save an image of your assembly. There's a number of different image type options, JPEG, GIF, BMP, PNG also. I'm going to use a JPEG. Now click on Options. Here we can specify the image size. I'll just cancel out for now, since I already took the liberty of saving this image previously in preparation for this course. OK, let's go to the Forms tab of the iLogic browser. Now right-click and select Add Form. Another way to create a form is via the Manage tab. Go to the iLogic panel and click the Add Form tool. Here we specify the name of the form and the type of form, whether local or global. Let's accept the default name with a click of OK. So here's our form. On the left hand side is the form editor. And let's begin by changing some names. I'll call this parameters, control, tab to register. And the form name appears here. Now let's drag in the picture we just created. Click here to browse for the image. Here's the JPEG I just saved. Click Open. We can rename the label if needed. We can also choose to show or hide the labels. We can select the label position as well. For this example, I'm going to hide the label. Now let's bring in my three parameters, length, width, and height. As you see, they appear here on the form. We've also got the ability to change how a form looks. For example, we can select items like border and just say true or false to show it or hide it. Text left or right. Change the font parameters as well. We can change the font setting parameters for individual items as well. Next, we've got visual style. We can select flat, ultra flat, 3D, and so on. I'm just going to use default. Down below, we've got a tooltip area, and this explains what each control does. Allow control resizing. That option does exactly what it says, allowing you to change the size of the controls on the form. Let's click OK. And click on the form. Right click, resize controls. Now we can grab and drag the controls and resize. When you're done, right click, select Edit Resize Mode. Let's continue editing our form. Right click, Edit. Underneath Allow Control Resizing, we see an option called Modal. The options are True or False. Basically, this option lets you edit your model when the form is displayed if the option False is chosen here. We can also select from predefined buttons like OK, Cancel, Apply, OK, and Cancel, etc. Let's go back to Done. Show On Place Component. 
This option makes the form appear if this component is inserted into another assembly. All right, let's select a parameter. First, we can change the label. Specify the text location, left, right, top, bottom, and so on. Here we can type in some tooltip text. Let's go to the width parameter. We can also edit the font type and size. Next, we have edit control type. We can use a text box or a slider. And when the slider option is selected, slider properties appear. Minimum value, let's make it zero. The maximum value, I'll set at 50. And the step size, let's make it 10. So with a step size of 10, I made the minimum value zero to allow the increments to jump up in groups of 10. If I set the minimum slider at one, the increments would leap from one to 11, 21, and that's just a little more awkward. For the last parameter here, we've got by default drop down menu. Here we can also edit the controls by choosing a combo box, a list box, or a radio group. I'm going to select the combo box. Now let's click OK and check how our form works. So click on the form. It opens and let's change the height now, for example, to 30 millimeters. OK. And let's change the width to 20, let's say. Notice that when I change the parameter value, my rules run automatically. Let's learn how we can change this. Edit. And select our form. Let's select predefined buttons. Let's use OK, cancel, and apply. And let's run our rule again. Now let's say I want the width to be 40. In order for the rule to run, I need to click apply this time. And let's click OK and close the form. Now let's say I want to execute my second rule from the form. Let's learn how to do that. First, let's make some changes to the form. Right click, edit. Here's the rules tab. Remember, my second rule is at the component level. I don't see this rule here. Let's learn how we can get around that problem. Let's go back to the Rules tab on the iLogic browser and open up our rule with a double click. First thing I'm going to do is comment out this line. Now let's copy it. And I'm going to create a second rule. Add rule. Give it a name. I'll call it Hole Diameter. Hole underscore DIA. And click OK. This rule is going to control the whole diameter rule. Let's go back to Forms. Right click and Edit. Go to the Rules tab. And let's drag my new rule here. First, let's change the label name. Whole diameter. Tab to register. We can also use an image if we want. Let's select the same image. Click Open. With an image, we've got the option to use text or not. Let's actually select and delete this image. Now scroll down. Here we can use tooltips if needed and change their font. Under Behavior, on Click Action, we've got many options here. What you choose depends on the logic of your routine. Run rule, close and then run rule, apply and then run rule. For my example, I'm going to simply use run rule. And let's click OK. Now before we run this rule, let's edit the whole diameter rule. And let's double click update when done. We'll bring this snippet into our code. Click OK. OK again, go to Forms, 
and open up our form. Let's change the width to 30 millimeters and click Apply. Now let's run the whole diameter rule. Click OK. Let's close our form and then open it up for editing. I wanted to show you one more thing. Let's select the length parameter. Scroll down. We've got the option to make this control read only. In other words, the end user can see the parameters but not edit them in any way. So keep that in mind, this is a useful modification. Let's close the form. And this concludes our first tutorial about working with forms.